Okay, uh, welcome to another episode of Let's Make Something. Um, I'm going to attempt to print out an entire army, basically. Um, as you've probably seen, I've done some miniatures before, and they're with, with mixed results. Um, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun just sort of sitting down and, and painting those, spending some time in the quiet, just putting together these little figures. Um, but as I've been getting interested in, in this sort of tabletop wargaming type stuff, uh, a lot of the big battle games require large armies, and i got to be honest, that, that uh, is slightly daunting to me. So basically, I found a bit of a shortcut. Basically, I discovered paper soldiers. Paper soldiers, uh, unsurprisingly, they're just little paper soldiers that you um, cut out, you stick together, you fold them together, and just like that, you've got yourself a little two-dimensional army. I'm not painting, I'm not basing, I'm not highlighting, I'm not doing all those beautiful skilled things that so many um, war gamers are able to do. Um, so there's a part of me that kind of feels guilty about the fact that I'm not doing that. But, my goodness are these things pretty. So these are created by a guy called Peter Dennis. Peter Dennis has been making little paper soldiers for years, um, quite successfully too. Uh, he's got a website called Peter's Paper Boys. I'll put a link in the description so you can go have a look at his stuff. Um, but yeah, he, he makes these little paper soldiers that you then sort of stick together, cut out, um, and you have yourself a little cheap and efficient army. Um, I love, I've got to say, I really do love his designs. I'll try and focus. The aesthetic on these are just lovely. It's a, it's a lovely mixture of like things that are to scale, that look fairly realistic, but they've still got that sort of painterly, cartoony quality, which I just think I, I just really like. I really like the looks of them. So I, I got some of these, I downloaded them. These ones specifically actually came free as a part of um, the War Games Illustrated website. Um, so it's not the full range, it's pretty much just like the cliche uh, Jacobite range. And I'll, I'll get to why I picked Jacobites in a sec. Um, cliche Jacobite range, it hasn't got any of the, the Irish regulars or, or the lowlanders or anything like that. It's pretty much just hairy dudes with shields versus dudes in red coats. Um, but it's going to be enough for at least the start of this project I want to sort of put together to see if it works. Now, obviously, like um, Mr. Dennis suggests, you, you stick them together, you, you cut them out, you make them look very pretty, and that looks really good. But what I decided I might do instead is I bought myself some balsa wood from a, from a hobby store, and I'm going to stick them onto these balsa wood frames. Uh, if you want to skip this, uh, this whole step, if you like what I'm doing, um, then you could go to a website called WoFun Games. Um, this is where I got the idea from, and what they do is they actually um, they, they've worked with uh, Peter Dennis and a few other artists and they've been printing these sort of designs onto Perspex um, little miniatures. They, again, are gorgeous. I would, I would love to have a set. Um, but two things. Firstly, um, I'm in Australia and printing and shipping suddenly bumped that price up a lot. Which brings us to the second thing. As we've established before, I am a complete cheapskate. So I probably will get the, uh, get a set eventually from, from Wofun Games. They do look very pretty, but I might just save my nickels and dimes a little bit before I do that. In the meantime, because I want some of these things kind of vaguely now, I'm going to basically take these designs and stick them onto this balsa wood as best I can, uh, and then have a nice little standing army, which I can then use. Um, I'm thinking about looking at Warlord Games, maybe getting um, some black powder going with these things. But I'm um, also just playing around with like rule sets of my own and, and see what I can come up with that could be a lot of fun. I'm thinking like sort of Highlander Wars. Why Jacobites though? That's the question. Why would you do Jacobites when you could do Napoleonics or whatever? Other than the fact that there is a certain aesthetic appeal about these characters. Um, it was the last conflict on British soil, well supposedly. Um, and it was a real example of sort of the, the Imperial British Redcoats versus the ragtag warrior culture. Soldiers versus warriors, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's an evocative period in and of itself. But also, um, for myself personally, like most people in, in Australia and the States and other sort of colonial parts of the world, we like to claim that there's some sort of connection between ourselves and, and the plucky rebel Highlanders. I, I did hear a story recently about... Um, a Texas lady who, who got a, a genealogist type person to research her own heritage and basically she demanded a refund when she discovered that her family wasn't from the Highlands but were actually uh, from somewhere in England. So uh, take this with a grain of salt but I have done some research, my, my grandparents have done some research and indeed 
portions of our family come from the McKinnon um, clan and from the Cameron's clan. Um, and both of those clans uh, sent warriors, maybe not people from my family, but they did send warriors off to fight at the Battle of Culloden. And the McKinnons themselves also sheltered uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie on the way out of England after his failed attempt uh, to rise up and, and take what he saw as his rightful claim to the throne. I'm not sure if he's right about that, but, but that's what clearly my ancestors did support that idea. And on the way out, there's a little thank you token. I think he, he cut off a button off his tunic or something like that. A little brooch, and he gave that brooch to um, this little McKinnon um, group on the Isle of Skye. And that little button stayed in our family for quite a long time. Um, not on my little branch of the family, but I've got some pictures of my uncle at his wedding. And on his lapel is indeed the same brooch that Bonnie Prince Charlie had given us um, many, 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 many years ago. In a way, this battle, the Battle of Culloden, these people, these people involved in it, is a part of the reason, a part of the reason, not the, well, the only reason, but a part of the reason that I find myself on the other side of the world from the UK, um, in Australia. Uh, it was the battle that basically put an end to the idea that, um, you know, the way of life that my family had been practicing for thousands of years was the way to go. And that if I did if our families did want to continue as they were, they'd have to either change where they were, or in the case of my families, they'd have to move. And they moved all the way to the other side of the world here in Australia and caused a bunch of mischief here instead. So yeah, that's part of the reason why I selected up these Jacobites. But back to the hobby. As I said, my plan is to stick these onto some balsa wood. Um, I'll probably maybe give them a bit of gloss to make them nice and shiny. And hopefully this works out. I don't know if it quite will, but we'll see how we go. Um, I'll time lapse it to give you a bit of a look at the process, but um, yeah, this should be fun. So, uh, talk to you later. first knock up of little soldiers. I just spent some time um, putting them together uh, just like from start to finish all in one go with these little little I guess you could say pilot pieces and I'm happy with how things are going. So uh, just basically sticking them on either side of the balsa wood and then cutting it out. I tried to use like a watered down glue at first uh, to make the glue last longer and I thought it'd be better to soak into the paper but it didn't quite work out that way so I've just basically gone almost full thick uh, PVA on it just to make it stick on there and then yeah cut them out cut them to, to sort of to shape um, I thought about putting uh, some like grass or something like that down there and I might still do that but I kind of like the these are obviously paper toy soldier look like the whole like I'm thinking when it comes to making some terrain I might continue this idea that like these are these are things that you might see a pop up in like a like a little puppet show you know what I mean and 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 but nonetheless still have like that game and that drama play out with the pieces so I don't know I might leave them I'm thinking about um coloring the bases though to clearly denote um different factions and different forces so that might happen as well plus the whole thing will probably get a gloss uh, one thing that I do need to think about, and I, I've kind of made, I think I think I'm going to do with it, uh, the muskets up here. 
as you can see I haven't fully trimmed out the full edges of these dudes I might keep them that way but those muskets are presenting a problem like a that just makes it this big square block and B you can't really see the back rank which kind of loses some of the effect so I thought about just cutting the, the the musket straight off and just having like a flat and I might do that if it proves tricky but it kind of would be cool to have those tall muskets still there and the bayonet sorry the bayonet still there so I might try and fiddle around and stick these in. So this, this one might get ripped off the base, sadly. Um, and have that sort of trimmed out, and I'll trim out the other ones. But yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking how they look. And I've got plans to how we're going to base our little sort of command groups, um, the cavalry, that kind of thing. So yeah, it should be fun to do. But basically, I sit down and knuckle in. And when you hear me talk to you again, I hope to have the whole army finished. Unless something horribly goes wrong and I want to tell you about it. But no, hopefully uh, I'll, I'll put the time lapse on and when I talk to you next, the whole array will be assembled. See you then. So here it is. These are the two paper armies that I've finally put together. I'm pretty happy with it. So we've got ourselves the Jacobite army and the British Redcoats. Uh, I was originally going to have trying to make more Jacobites than Redcoats, but in the end, um, they're roughly the same numbers. The difference is there's more variety of Redcoat troops. There's the Dragoons, there's the Grenadiers, and they've got more cannon. So. They've got a bit more variety. Uh, over here though with the Jacobites, we've mainly got these sort of uh, swordsmen here. You know, they've got their, their, their uh, not backless swords. I forgot the term for it. Flash up on the screen in a sec. And these sort of like barefoot Highlander types. Again, th these printouts that I used, um, it's kind of the cliche Jacobite forces. There were more different soldier types on both sides in the actual conflict, but it's going to be useful for now. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, uh, I'll do a few more things. I might make a few more soldiers. I was thinking maybe to uh, varnish the pieces just to make them a bit more durable. I still might do that. I might not. I'm not sure. As you can see, I've also, from the uh, Peter Paperboy website, bought a few bits of scenery um, to print out and to use. I think they'll be useful in the types of games that I want to play. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I'm pretty happy with the result. We've got ourselves our two vast armies. It only took me about, I don't know, a week to put all this together. And yes, they're not miniatures. Miniatures are definitely more beautiful and take a lot more skill to put together. Uh, but for my purposes, this will serve the job. And I do quite like the look of them. So anyway, uh, see you around. I might have a few close-up pictures in a sec. But uh, yeah, hopefully I can get these working in some games and maybe even games that I'll show you in the future. Alright, thank you so much for tuning in, and hopefully you'll see me around later. Alright, bye.